Everybody, Dave here. I have another video for you. I want to talk about earnings because this is my favorite time of the quarter. This is when you get positive or negative movement in your stock. All right, and you kind of see how your companies are doing. And uh, this is why it's one of my favorite times of the quarter. So over the years, I've used basically five different strategies. Some of these strategies are just my own. Some of them I've you know read and come up with from other people. Um, there is no particular order with these strategies. They all have pros and cons. Um, but just know that earnings is really just a gamble, all right? You really have a 50-50 shot whether it's going to go up or go down, okay? So um, if you want to take a look at these earnings uh, plays, um, I'm going to go ahead and go through them one at a time here. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. So let's go ahead and get started. So there is no particular weight to these. So number one is uh, buy two weeks ahead of time and sell just before earnings. So um, if a stock has earnings, say aftermarket close on October 14th, then technically you could sell on October 14th before the market closes. All right, some stocks like to sell off right before the market closes. And I don't know if that has to do with anything with, um, you know, the earnings being leaked or whatever, but um, buying two weeks ahead of time could be three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, doesn't really matter. Um, because implicit bias is that stocks should be going up over the lifetime of the stock, right? I mean, they're in business to make money. They should be returning uh, value back to the shareholder. So in general, the bias should be going always up. Okay. So that's why sometimes the tweaks ahead of time, just buying and then selling before earnings has worked for me in the past on multiple stocks. All right. So that's number one. Um, the second one is, is, uh, Buying a straddle, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go use an example here on Johnson & Johnson, okay? So you're gonna do an options play here. So we're looking at Johnson & Johnson here. So a straddle works like this, all right? You're gonna buy a put option, you're gonna buy a call option. Same strike, same expiration, okay? So right now, um, looks like Johnson & Johnson's trading at 130.89, okay? So you're gonna find a strike that's the nearest uh, expiration. So this case here, Johnson Johnson does post earnings tomorrow morning, by the way. Um, so you would have wanted to buy this uh, the day before, okay? Um, so here it is, the expiration on this is this Friday, which is four days away. So you always wanna buy the nearest expiration if you can. Um, and we're gonna go to the 130 here which is right here. And what you would do is you would buy one of these calls and you would buy one of these puts, okay? And that's a straddle, all right? So what does that mean really? Um, it means that technically you're playing both sides. If the stock goes up, you could make money. If the stock goes down, you could make money. Now the only flaw or the only caveat with a straddle is it has to make a big enough move that that put on the other side or the call on the other side is going to get wiped out and you're going to make enough money on the side that you know is positive and it wipes out the negative side okay so um, it's hard to kind of use an example here but um, if you pay two dollars and you know 20 cents for this call here and you pay a buck 40 for this put if the stock goes up, it's got to make enough money to make that $140 up over here, okay? And the same goes for the other side. If the stock goes down after earnings, you got to make enough money on the put side to make up that $220 you're going to lose over here, all right? So this, so the straddle really works best on things that are going to move substantially. Okay, and I mean, there's no guarantee that a stock is gonna move 10 or 15%, but let me kind of give you a guesstimate of how much things possibly could move. And this works most of the time. Um, it's not foolproof, but in general, it works pretty good. So, so if you wanna have any idea how much Johnson & Johnson's gonna move um, after earnings, um, take the current price, which is 130, take that strike price, which is 130, add basically in between the bid and the ask here, which is roughly 215. Okay, so two, 215 for the call, and then add the put side, which is 140 for the bid, and the ask is 146, so we'll split the difference there, 143. So uh, that comes out to $3.58, okay, and we're gonna divide that by 130, 
okay? And that comes out to about a 2.75% move. That's what they're planning this stock to move in either direction, either positive or negative, okay? And this works, I, this works pretty good. Um, I mean, Johnson & Johnson is not gonna move very much. It's a dividend payer, it's a juggernaut, so. Um, but take any other stock out there, like a stock like a Tesla, for example, and you could get like a 10% or 15% move out of that. And uh, that's what the options are pricing in. And this works basically with the nearest expiration, okay? So it's usually that Friday, all right? Don't go out two weeks or anything like that because it's not accurate then. So that is basically how a straddle works. And um, that works on stocks that have a pretty significant move. I'd say at least uh, anything from a five to 10% move. So basically what you do, if you wanna know what the options could be worth um, after earnings, if you know, you're playing basically this, in this case here, Johnson Johnson could move that 2.75%, which is roughly about $3.58. What you do is you'd come down $3 or so um, to the 127 area, and that's possibly what the option could be worth, okay? And then you can kind of subtract the difference there and you know, see whether or not it would pay for the put side, all right? Now, if it makes a bigger move than that, you're gonna make more money. So you wanna find stocks that have a good move uh, if you're gonna play the straddle, okay? So the third strategy is, is buy in the dips after earnings if bad, okay? So I use this all the time. Uh, matter of fact, I'll even buy after hours on a dip because um, a lot of times what that first initial reaction to the, to the earnings, the algos just go crazy. They catch on keywords and it just tanks to like the 200 period moving average. And I'll buy right there just real quick. And if it comes back up in the green, I'll sell it that same exact day, right after hours, literally just seconds after buying it. Um, but if the, you know, the downtrend is real, um, then you, know, you can still pick it up at a really good price and who knows, you know, during the rest of that aftermarket session, it could come back up, could fight its way back up, you know, the shorts could cover. So I've bought a lot of stocks like this after earnings um, on bad market news. Um, I've bought Starbucks down in the low 50s and high 40s, uh, what was it, back in 2017 or 2018, I think it's 2018. So that is one of my favorite strategies because I'm gonna get it at a really good price. There's no guarantee that it's gonna stay down. Sometimes the next day it just comes right back up. Typically when a stock drops uh, and it's a real drop, you really wanna wait three or four days to buy it. Um, but you don't know if it's gonna be that type of drop or not. So um, that is one of my favorite strategies. So just be aware of that. It could continue to drop for three or four days after uh, the earnings. So, so the fourth strategy I've used is buy just before a market close, um, short or long. So let's use Apple as an example here. So Apple, this is say has earnings tomorrow on October 15th, and they don't by the way, but let's just say they do. Um, they usually post earnings at right 4.30 in the afternoon. Okay, so what I would normally do is buy literally 10 or 20 seconds before the market closes, and okay, it's a 50-50 shot whether or not you think it's gonna go long or it's gonna go short, okay? So it's gonna go up or go down on you. Um, and the reason why I wait that last 20 seconds or so is because a lot of times stocks either sell off right at the end of the day or they go up right at the end of the day because of earnings, okay? So I wanna make sure that I'm getting right at the price that it's gonna close at, okay? So I've seen stocks where I've bought it too early and they're gonna have earnings that day and I might buy like right at the hour of power when it starts you know, at two o'clock or three o'clock, the hour of power is really three to four, but uh, that hour of power, sometimes I've seen stocks, you know, sell off that whole hour, all right, and I bought, and then here I'm already down 2% or something like that, okay? So that's the reason I wait that 20 seconds uh, right before the market closes, and I'll either go long or short. It's just a guess at that point whether it's going to go long or short, okay? Um, but that is a good strategy that I've used. Um, and the same thing with the fifth option here is you can play uh, puts or calls exactly the same way. Um, make sure you do the expiration, the nearest expiration that you can, okay? You don't wanna go way out because that, you're gonna kill that premium, okay? So try to go with the nearest expiration for that Friday. So if you have earnings on Wednesday or so, buy an expiration for that Friday, all right? That way you're not paying all that extra for the premium. Um, you know, like I said, it's a 50-50 shot whether it's gonna go up or down, okay? So if you think it's gonna go up, buy a call, all right? And what I would suggest is, is buy one near the money or in the money, um, right at the money if you can. 
Um, if you go too far out of the money, it's gonna have to make too big of a move to be in the money, okay? And it could just get, that premium could just get killed um, overnight, all right? So, because you can't sell these options after hours. That's the only downfall to this particular strategy is I like to be able to get out after hours if I make money um, by holding common, all right? So if you're gonna buy a put or a, a call, then you're gonna have to be, hope that that stock, you know, let's just say you buy a call, for example, and the stock goes up 5% and you're gonna be making you know, two, $300 on this call, there's no guarantee that the stock is gonna be up 5% tomorrow morning, all right? So that's the only downfall to this strategy is you're gonna to have to hope that if you are right, that it's gonna stay up all the way overnight through the morning session and till the stock market opens and then you can close out that call, okay? Um, so that's the reason why I say also to buy right at the money because you have a better chance of it being you know, in the money and you're gonna make money off of it versus buying a lotto ticket and buying you know, $5 you know, out of the money and then having it reach that and you're just breaking even at this point, okay? So buy right at the money right before the market closes, okay? So those are the five strategies that I've used. So my top two favorites out of these are the number one, so buy two weeks ahead of time and then sell just before earnings. And also buy on dips after earnings if they're bad, okay? And then the third one I'd say is just buying, uh, going long or going short just before the market closes, 20 seconds or so, and then selling um, right after market if I'm right, okay? So, so for number four here, for example, buying just before the market closes, and if I am right, then I'll go ahead and sell after market, but if I'm wrong, um, if it's tanking or something like that and going against me, I will buy and average down right then and there because a lot of times that initial reaction is the wrong reaction and sometimes the shorts have to cover and that causes it to go way up back in the green. So that initial reaction is sometimes wrong. So I sometimes average down. So that has worked very well for me as well. So I hope these five, uh, you know, earnings plays here can help you out. Go ahead and try some of these. Like I said, there is pros and cons to all these um, strategies here. Um, some are more risky than others, but uh, let me know if you've tried any of these in the past um, or if you're gonna try any of these this earnings season. So um, if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.